Sage 100 allows you to perform period and year-end closing at the end of each accounting period and for your last fiscal accounting period of the year. This process clears your period-to-date balances and moves them to the prior period. At year-end, the process also clears the year-to-date balances accumulated in the master files and prepares for the new year. In this overview, we will cover backing up your system and companies, closing procedures, tasks to complete, and year-end interim release downloads and service packs. There are additional topics available that are module specific that you'll want to review as well. There's a lot to be aware of when you close your period or year and you want to proceed in a very methodical approach. You want to make sure you have a tested backup and it's recommended that you do a backup each period and as well at the end of the year. There are a number of ways that you can do backups. You'll want to follow the suggested order of closing. You'll want to follow your checklist and there are some available in SAGE 100 to help you with organizing this time. You want to ask your business partner if there are any special circumstances you need to be aware of. That might include some additional enhancements that you have installed. You'll want to access SAGE websites for important closing information and downloads. And you'll want to be communicating with the employees that are involved with the period or year end processing so they know exactly what's expected of them. Let's look at the different ways that you might back up your company information. You can create a new company and copy the live company. We would recommend including the date of the backup in the description. Or you can have your IT staff back up the full MASS90 directory and save it each year and label it accordingly. Ideally, your official backup should be stored in a separate location, like on a backup drive or external drive. Some companies even store them off-site. Let's take a look at these different ways that you can back up your system. One easy way that you can back up your system every period at the end of the year is in Library Master, in the main menu, Company Maintenance. So let's say that I'm ready to back up my ABC company and I want to do it for the year 2018. So I'll just use A, that would replicate my ABC company. And then in the description for the company name, I may have the company. So I know the company, I know when the backup was done. And then I'll just select Copy. I'll go ahead and say OK. Now, I need to save my company record, and then I come to the copy data where I need to identify the source company. Now, I want to copy my ABC company. You can see, it looks like I have a backup from last year here as well. So I want to back up my ABC company, and I'll select it. By default, all modules you have for this company will be selected for backup. If you don't want to back up all the modules, that's okay. Perhaps you just want to make a backup of payroll. So all you would do would be to unselect all those modules. Now, if you are backing up only individual modules, you need to back up general ledger and common information. Just check the general ledger and common information will be selected as well. And then if I was just doing payroll, I would select payroll. I'm going to go ahead and select all of my modules for backup and then I'll go ahead and proceed. I'll be prompted to copy all the data files, which I do want to do. I'm making an exact copy as of this point in time, so I'll say yes. And it's looking at all of my information and copying the data. So you can see now I have data for all of my modules for the, this company, and I'll go ahead and accept. And just to show you, if I change companies, And let's go to General Ledger just for example. And I look at Account Maintenance. I will see all of the accounts that I have in that company. So I do have a backup. Now an alternative way is to back up the entire MASS90 directory. And depending upon where you have your SAGE 100 installed, you'll need to find it. So I have it on my C drive under the SAGE folder under SAGE 100 and the, the 
I'm using Sage 100 standard and here's where I see the MAS90 directory. So your IT staff could back this up perhaps on a regular nightly routine. It is important to follow a logical order of closing so that a module that writes to another posts first. Here we have a list of the various modules and the order they should be closed in. Now some modules don't have official closing routines such as bill of materials and work order and barcode. However, you would want to review these modules, run various reports on a routine basis. But looking at modules that do have posting routines, for example, Sales order and purchase order write to inventory. Sales order writes to accounts receivable. Purchase order writes to accounts payable. And both of them update the general ledger. So those modules should be closed in the particular order. Sales order should be before accounts receivable. Purchase order should be accounts payable. And the last module you close is general ledger. So thinking about your entire Sage 100, that means all invoices, all cash receipts, all receipts of goods, all receipts of invoices, all journals should be posted and updated prior to closing the general ledger. In fact, you might decide not to close general ledger at the end of the year because you may have audits and tax returns that you need to have entries to. You'll also notice that bank reconciliation is not listed. That's generally done when you receive your statements. Payroll is listed, but that's done on a quarterly basis. So be aware that certain modules should close in particular orders. Now looking at your individual modules, there are also various checklists that are available to help you in closing. And let's take a peek at those. On Sage, you can go into Help, and in the Search field, just type in the word Checklist. This will bring up a variety of different checklists. And we're focusing on period end and year end. Now, some of these are clearly labeled. So for example, here's my general ledger period end and period end processing. Here's job cost, accounts payable, accounts receivable. But if we look at this one called period end processing checklist, and then there's the period end and year end processing checklist, and another period end and year end processing checklist, it's really not clear which module. But if you look a little closer, you can see that it actually gives you the module. So this period end processing checklist, this one's for inventory. Notice the IM. This period in year end processing is for purchase order. Here's the PO. And then this one is for sales order. These can be very helpful in closing your period. They are defined in separate topics that are done at the module level. So who actually closes the period? Well, all that is determined by security in role maintenance. When do I close? As stated previously, once all of your data has been entered for the prior period, and if it's the end of the year, and all reports are run and reconciled, though you may want to leave General Ledger open. Do I have to close? Well, technically you don't, but it does stop processing inadvertently to any past periods that you consider closed. For example, if the current period is June and it is actually August, the default posting will be to June. And it's just really, really easy to accept that default. And then your posting is in the wrong period, which means it's going to be adjustment time. I know whenever the year changes, it takes me a while for automatically writing the new year on my checks. So similarly, if we keep a period open, there might be posting to the wrong period. And that means backing out entries and making adjustments. So everyone should be out of the system when you're closing and also, as we said, when you do a backup. Master Console lets you see who is on the system. And if you see users on the system using the module you want to close, you could actually call them, email them, or use the Broadcast button. Let me show you where you access the Master Console. So right on your ribbon, you'll see the Master Console. And it's going to display the workstation that's being used, the user, the company the user is in, what they're actually doing. And this is actually an ideal situation because only one user is in the system and only the desktop is open. You'll notice that there is a broadcast button. This can be used to broadcast a message to all of the users who are on the system. 
So you can you can use the broadcast button, you could email, you could call a user. Once the user said they're out and back to the desktop, you can actually refresh this screen to see what the current status is and if the users actually are out. You also can use the shutdown all button, which is used to terminate a user session once they have returned to the desktop and are out of any open task. Just as a reminder, at period end and year end, the tasks that should be completed are to enter and post all data entry tasks, such as open invoices, cash receipts, and posting journals in the module, printing the reports, reconciling the module to the general ledger, and then closing the module. It is important that you know what version you are on, not only at period end or year end, but at any time there might be a product update that will be released. If you are on an unsupported version, there will be no more product updates, no interim releases, and potentially no support from Sage. It's time to upgrade if you have an unsupported version, but if you have third-party integrations, be sure to verify the versions are supported. In order to find your version, on your Sage desktop, you'll go to the tab for help and look at About Sage 100. In order to find your supported version, you'll go to the Sage support website. And you can do that either from this website address, or you can do that directly from your Sage 100, which is a very quick and easy way to do that. The chart you see will show you the supported versions, when they're released, if phone support is still available, if there is a year-end interim release, any tax tables that might need to be updated for payroll, any product updates, hot fixes, and your online support knowledge base. Mm -hmm. Historically, around the second or third week in December, the interim release download is available, and that would include upgrades that might need to be made due to federal and or state changes. You'll need to verify you have installed the latest product update for your version, and then you can install the latest IRD to print your 1099s and W-2s. You can then run your W-2s and 1099s, and in order to prepare for your first payroll in the new year, before you run the first payroll, you'll want to verify your unemployment rate in company tax group setup. Well, let's look at where you can find this information. On the Help tab, the last icon you see is Sage 100 About, and this is something that you'll need to understand where to find because a lot of times when you call support, they'll ask you for your version. So once you select this, it'll tell you your platform and version, and you can see I'm currently using Sage 100C Standard 2018 version 6.00.5.0. This is going to be important for you to understand and to be able to look at your supported versions as well as when you call support. So there's where you find your version. Now from your Sage 100 desktop, you can very easily access a lot of information. And here you can see the knowledge base, downloads and, and upgrades. You can enter a support ticket but I want you to be aware of the downloads and updates first. And this will take you directly to the support website where you can look at the various downloads and it will show the version appropriate for your installation as well as other applications you might have such as Sage CRM. Now if I scroll up, there's other information that I can select here. So I can go to the knowledge base from here and you can see that there's even a quick view of those various versions are retired. So right now, 2014, 2013, 4.4, and 4.5 are retired. But in order to get the supported version grid I showed you, all you need to do is type in supported versions and then search. And you'll see the supported versions, which will bring up the current supported versions at the time that you're searching. And there may also be some notes that you'll want to pay attention to as well. So it's very important that you understand how to find your version as well as to see what is supported. And you can do all of that from your Sage 100 desktop.